Um, so this is just a little application that I hacked together um, that show that um, does a lookup in the di in the dictionary using dictionary APIs. Um, <laughs> and let's see. So um, if you want to, you can look at it, but um, I basically, I've got it running locally. Uh, I had it running locally. So um, it's just a little Go application and you can load it and define a word. So banana, and it will go to, um, there's a couple different sources it'll pull from, but it prefers the Oxford English Dictionary. So here's some definitions for banana, um, which is all well and good. And you know, if I decide, you know, oh maybe um, I should say style gg color green. And let's see if I remember how to do that correctly. And if we reload. We should, yeah, okay. So I don't remember how to do inline styles. This is not about how I know or don't know how to do HTML because clearly I don't. Um, but so, you know, my local development loop is pretty quick, um, you know, just kill it and restart it. Um, but then if I wanna go and actually run this on Knative, um, you know, I, I don't know, can people read that? Does it need to be a little bigger? I think a little bit. Maybe bump it up a tick. Oops, that's too many ticks. Um, you know, I have this wonderful bit of gobbledygook that is a two-phase Docker file. Um, if I want to actually build this stuff, and then um, let's see, and then I can do a Docker build, um, and you know, you've all seen this, and it take some time. Um, you know, I'm, I happen to be using Go, but, um, you know, there's lots of different languages and almost all of our stuff, unless you're using Co, kind of looks like this. Um, and what's even better is now if I want to push this, I realize, oh, wait, I forgot to tag it. So, um, uh, Okay, and then I have to Docker push it. Um, and it takes some more time. And basically, you know, this iteration cycle, you know, kind of works, but kind of annoying. Um, and then I have to go into my YAML. You found the bunny alarm? No. Oh, I will. I will be finding a bunny later. Um, but, uh, you know, now if I want to go in and actually, you know, update something, I then have to run, you know, KN service update, um, fine image is whatever thing I got here. And then it turns and does its thing. And um, eventually it will show up here. Um, I've been having a few issues with SSL. So in some cases I might fall back to, um, and because I didn't remember how to do this. Um, there's my background color. I'm going to start using blink tags instead because those are really obvious. But uh, but you know that's that's sort of your typical workflow. But wouldn't it be great if um, your workflow could look a little bit more um, server side driven? And so I'm going to show you a couple of tools um, that um, were written by 
a variety of folks from VMware um, when they were under the Pivotal umbrella. So some of these come from Project Riff and some of these come from KPAC. Um, so first, um, let me show you KPAC. So let's see. So, um, so this is a image, which is a um, KPAC construct that lets you do cloud native builds. So I can make this a little bigger for you all. And when I create this image YAML, um, it will, let's see, is it done? It's done. Um, I'm also gonna show off Octant um, for those of you who haven't seen it. It's kind of a nice UI on these things. So I just created an image and right now it's not ready yet, um, but it will create a build um, each time that things change. And you can see that the build is currently progressing. Um, we'll leave that back there doing its thing and we'll look at what's actually in an image. So an image defines a source. Um, I've just pointed it at GitHub and um, master branch and a builder, which gives you a set of build packs. Um, this will actually build a lot of different languages. Um, this is this default K pack one and um, uh, cluster. So here is the cluster builder and you can see, um, oh, that's the definition of cluster builder. Um, I always forget when I'm looking in Octant, you have to load the object um, and then the YAML. But you can see there's build packs for Node and Go and .NET and a lot of other things. And so this will, using cloud native build packs, um, auto detect which language you're building and running and then go and build a container. So probably if we come back here and we look at our images, we'll see that there's a latest image now, um, which is the last, the most recent image that's been built. Um, so that's great. Um, I can go and uh, we'll note that this starts with 48E. I can go and make a change over here. Um, let's see. I said I was going to do blink. So let's see. Blink, save it. And blink more. Yes, uh, yes, do all the saves, push this up, and in a minute or so, we'll see um, another build kickoff. Another way you can watch that is with cube control get build dash W is just a watch on builds. So you can see right now we have the one build that was created at the beginning of time, but we'll pretty soon see another build kick off um, as the image notices that there's been a commit. And these are various stages of the build making progress. And so it keeps updating the status. Um, the only piece that really matters here is whether it succeeds or not and what the image is. But um, each time it gets updated along the way, um, the watch will report new information. So this will go for a moment or two. And then at the end, we will have a new image. Um, and let's look a little bit at this image again. Um, whoop, this is the one we want. So if we look at build define here, the YAML status has this field latest image. And um, if 
you all are familiar with duct typing, you may know where this is headed. Uh, anything that has a latest image, um, you, know, you can see our build has finished and the latest image has been updated to build two. Um, our friends in Project Riff have created a um, created a duct typed controller. Um, lost already. Uh, that is called an image binding, and it lets you connect an object that has a status with the latest image to a resource that should be updated. Um, so right now I can push builds to GitHub and within a minute or so I get a Docker image built, um, not on my local machine, but off in the cloud somewhere. Um, if I also apply this binding YAML, um, Um, now, this, every time the image is updated, um, the user container inside the service should also get updated. Um, and this works not just for services, but it also works for deployments. So, um, we'll create that as well. And then we can check and they're both ready to go. So now I should be able to um, forget how to do anything else annoying here. Uh, get bold. What? They get bold. Bold. Save. And if I'm super smart, I would actually check and see um, that stuff builds locally. It does. Okay. Yeah, do the stuff. I still need to figure out the one click, you know, commit and push thing in Visual Studio Code. Um, I'm sure there's a way to do it. But now over here, we can look and see our builds are still kicking off and running. And so let's see. Let's watch those. Um, so yeah, this is some of this is early prototype code. Some of this is semi production code. Um, none of it is hooked up with eventing. So there's no um, there's no registration of a webhook or anything like that to kick the build process. It's just doing a poll on GitHub. Um, but GitHub can deal with some polling. So, um, and here we go, it's kicked off. And let's see, while we're waiting, let's take a look at that service. So if we look at this, service. And it's YAML. Um, somewhere have an image specified here. And when this is done, the controller should move things over. Um, the other fun thing is one build since we have two um, 
since we have two image bindings, we can apply the same thing that we built to both of them, um, which is less interesting if it's in a web application like this, but if it's a sidecar, you could potentially push a whole bunch of different sidecars at the same time. Uh, let's see, we just built something that is an E2. Oh, look, um, it's already updated on the deployment. Let's go look at the surface. And of course, I'm doing a live demo, so the service didn't get updated here. Uh, well, the deployment got updated. Um, I would I would have to dig around to figure out why the service didn't, unless somebody on the call has seen this before. Uh, I would expect this to just get updated. Um, well, the other thing, of course, is so you can see all the pods that I've got running on the cluster, and this binding system is where that binding happens. So If you folks hadn't seen this already, whoa, um, let me run that command for you again. Um, you can specify a deployment rather than needing to specify a specific pod, um, which is pretty handy when you've got, you know, really long deployment names, uh, like in Kinetic. Yeah. Whoa, what's this? So that's a webhook. Uh, reconcile succeeded. Um, the the initial binding uh, probably should have replaced the new tag as well. Oh, I'm guessing it never uh, kicked in for that. Um, Oh, well, that's not a useful patch is a set of bytes. <laughs> I'm afraid I can't read that um, on the fly. Um, too old. The text is right below the, the hex. Oh. This, I'm not sure this is the same thing as the patch. I think it's was recently fixed. Okay. Um, yeah, I have a slightly older version of the code, so maybe that is a sign that I should fix that. Um, but uh, let me show you where these things actually live in case you're curious. Um, let's see, hide this. Uh, so this is the um, define app. It's only interesting in so much as if you want to reproduce what I was doing. Um, so this is Pivotal KPAC. Um, this is an integration with cloud native build packs that does builds on the server side. Um, and that provides you that image resource. And image bindings come from this project riff bindings. Um, and they have some nice documentation down here that shows you what to do with them and all the different values you need to put in. Um, but yeah, um, the exciting thing about image binding is that it should work not just with KPAC, but with anything else that exposes a spec.latest image. Um, so theoretically, you could query a Docker registry and 
find you know the last version of a given tag if you wanted um, and have that auto bump um, using image binding to resolve it down to a specific reference um, or you could um, say hey this is my external store of past end-to-end -end tests or you know past QA runs once something passes QA then it can actually get rolled out to the next stage of production um, so I thought that was kind of neat um, not my work, but happy to show it off. Awesome. Thank you so much, um, Evan, for the demo. Uh, now we have allotted some time to discuss this. Ideally, we would be doing this on individual rooms, uh, but we were not able to enable that for this meeting. So we can open the floor uh, to discuss now or ha you know share any comments or ideas that this may have inspired in you or questions there was a lot of activity in the chat during the demo so if anybody would like to uh, speak up now would be the time Hello, it is uh, Alec. Um, just a quick question about the binding. What are you changing on the image in the deployment or something else? Or? Um, that's changing just image. Um, in particular, it's changing the image associated with the container name inside spec.template. You mentioned some other tools that you were planning to use. What could be changed to make it, I don't know, faster to pick up the changes or? Oh, uh, um, if you connected um, the GitHub event source um, and used that to poke the image, um, that would cause the reconciler to kick off and decide to you know go and check and see if there's anything there and oh look there is um which would let you reduce the polling interval um it would look like webhook to um something running on the cluster you know to the, the source um which would poke the the uh, build controller and then would kick off a build that way and in theory you could bypass github right you could just send somehow what you modified either from your docker local or just change and build it in your cluster right yeah um and uh kpac actually supports several different kinds of sources um i use the github one because it's easy and doesn't require a lot of setup um but uh if people want to see i can show what the other sources that kpac can use are Let's see. Uh, we'll share this window. So, they have these source types. And so, a source can be a get or a blob, or you can actually pull from a registry. And they all, you can take a subpath. So you can say, not this whole Git repo, but like some subpath of the repo. Or, um, you know, not this whole tarball, but like this subpath, build from there. Um, so you can see Git has URL and revision. Um, blob is just a URL. And a registry, um, you can pull down an image. Um, so you can package your, your source code into an image, put it in your Docker registry, um, and then pull it from there. And, you know, obviously you need to get into the KPAC source to extend this further, but it would be doable. Um, if you move to something like Tecton, the fetch the source is actually a separate piece. And so um, you that's probably more easily pluggable the listen for changes is a little bit harder with Tecton, which is why I chose KPAC right now for the demo. 
Thank you. Uh, I think S. Nichols has a raised hand. Hey, Ali, this is no? Scott. Um, hey, Evan, I was wondering if you could compare and contrast this with uh, Tecton. You kind of started. Um, so KPAC is, um, is very focused on basically building a single Docker image from a single repo. Um, Tecton is basically a full featured workflow system. So um, if you wanna you know, use multiple repos or you wanna deliver multiple artifacts to different places, or you wanna do something more than just build your software, um, you know, if you have a more involved testing process, for example, um, you'll find that KPAC will run out of steam fairly quickly. Um, but it works really well for the simple case of I have some code and I just want to turn it into a Docker image. Um, whereas Tecton, because it's got so many more capabilities, you're greeted with, um, you know, okay, figure out what you want to do and how to describe that in a bunch of YAML documents. Um, whereas, you know, there were like three or four things I had to like intentionally write for the KPAC configuration, but it's pretty minimal. Um, if you look, if you look at their tutorial, um, basically you create a secret, you create a service account, and then you create your image, um, and you're done. And it sounds like they might be able to join up or something. Um, they both use cloud native, they both could use cloud native build packs. Um, that's a common tooling. Um, that KPAC is leveraging. Um, Tecton can plug into something that can build cloud native build packs. Um, Tecton itself is decoupled from any particular build process. So if you really want to use Tecton to deliver your mobile apps, it's a good tool for that too, I guess. Cool. Thanks. Any other questions, comments? Oh, I forgot to show one other cool thing that Octant will do. So maybe um, I will show that as well, just so that, um, you know, it's look at all the cool tools that we already have because we're part of the Kubernetes ecosystem time. Um, so one neat thing about Octant um, is that you can actually um, go in and look at a pod. And if it knows what's going on, you can start a port forward from the UI, um, which is kind of slick. And you can see all the events and stuff that were related to it. So I've been trying to train myself to actually use the pretty UIs rather than just do everything from the command line and then curse when it doesn't work well. Um, so you can see now um blink is no longer actually a valid tag so so much for my making things really ugly but the blink tags are in there don't need to port forward anymore um the other thing is that octan if you look at it um is running off of localhost so it uses your local cube config um and basically runs as you rather than being something that runs in the cluster and you have to figure out how to access control it. 